Hey. Hey, and welcome to Mama Soup Talks. I'm Joanne, founder of the Mama Soup Social Network for Moms, and I am talking with my lovely hubby, Eric, hey. every week about parenting issues and um, just giving our perspective since we've uh, been there, done that. Yep. And once again, most of these conversations are taken as an extension of a conversation that's been started on our app. Yes. So a mama, if you're interested, mama soup, uh, dot app. No, is it dot app? You can no, it's me. dot ca. It's mama soup dot ca. But it is available on iOS, Android, and we have a web app if you don't have a smartphone. It's completely anonymous, free, and based on your location. Absolutely. So um, I was looking through the app and a, a huge topic of conversation is sleep. Kids, oh. babies. Yeah. You, mean lack of, you mean lack of or parent Not sleep? Not parenting kids? sleep either because that just ain't <laughs> happening. I was saying this is going to be a short conversation. If yeah, you're no. About parenting sleep. <laughs> no, it's about um, like, I guess how to get kids. First of all, I have to say, it's not normal for a baby to sleep through the night. No, it's not. You might want it to be. I By the time <laughs> I got to my last kid, I just couldn't get up in the night anymore. You had to do it. Yes, I remember. Yeah, I <laughs> Every remember. It was like for the last th two months or something, before he started sleeping through, he yeah. would just wake up and want his diaper changed. Yeah, and you refused. You were like... <laughs> Fuck this. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm old. I'm tired. You wouldn't even wake up. I would wake up. And I that's the funny thing, because when we had babies, I slept so lightly. Every sound, every twitch I would wake up to. I wish I could have snored through it all, like a lot of guys do, but I yeah. couldn't. Anyway. So um bedtime got, routines. Yeah. yeah, because they they should be kind of starting. I'm, uh, just because babies don't sleep through the night doesn't mean you shouldn't start practicing bed night like bedtime routines. Yeah. Um, because children, most children thrive on a routine. Yep. If your yeah. lifestyle, if your lifestyle as a parent affords it, then start with a routine. I understand that routines don't work for everybody. Like mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. your life, your life doesn't let you have a routine, right? But to the yes. best, babies. They did. They do appreciate. They do work. Uh, kids and children do work well with with schedules and with routines. I find to a certain age, anyway. Yeah, and yeah. I think it starts with the soul sucking bath. <laughs> and then, what are you trying to, you trying to say? I, uh, <laughs> the worst part of being a parent is. And so you you rush, you get dinner, you clean it up, and then it's time for that whole shitty routine. I couldn't stand it. I hated it. Honestly, I had no idea you hated it because I you would sing and dance around with our whichever kid you had, and it was a routine. It was all part of that routine. Let's get in the bath, and you would sing and you would do your stuff. I didn't realize you hated it so much. So knowing me the way you do. Does a routine appeal to me? Oh fuck no. <laughs> no. It's it to me it's just it's it's suffocating. And yeah. I was probably singing because I was insane. Okay. Okay, good to no, know. No, like just because I hated it didn't mean that I wanted to make it a shitty experience for my kids. Well, that's good because I don't think it was. I think your kids enjoyed it, right? So Yeah, they'll probably watch they this and be like, "What? You weren't you weren't into it?" <laughs> oh, ba babies enjoy stuff like that. And they show you by peeing in your face when you're changing their diaper. Yeah, lucky. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> There's nothing like, right, like just having the fight with the toddler oh. and then wrangling them in the bath and doing the washing the hair and then trying to force them to brush their teeth. That's another conversation on the app, by the way. Oh, trying brushing. to get toddlers yeah. to brush their teeth or even open their mouth so you can do it for them because they're but, you know. honestly the for me the secret to getting children to do anything is to make a game out of it yes if they can have fun out of it they will continue to do it if they see it as a chore or if you present it as a chore 
you're going to struggle getting them to do it for their entire lives. Yeah. It's just not going to work. You got to make it fun. Okay. And make it toothpaste easy. Bubble gum toothpaste. Only a little bit. The problem I had with toothpaste was kids would put like half the tube on their tooth. If you can't let them do it, you've got to do it for them. Put a little bit of toothpaste on and or pretend. Grab it and do it in your mouth and go, mmm. Oh, this is so good. And then watch their faces. Hey, I want I want to try that. Give me that. Or tell them it's, it's magical sleep. <clears throat> Child psychology. There's a whole other conversation right there. How yeah. to get your children to do things. Yeah, manipulation. Right. It's 100%. all manipulation. Because yeah. you can't reason with a child. There's no yeah. reasoning with a toddler. None whatsoever. Because they don't have the ability to do cognitive thinking. So they can't process what you're reasoning to them about. So stop wasting your time. I just, <laughs> just as an aside, I feel so bad for parents who aren't able to be creative like that. Like, in, yeah. and, and be- It's just not in their nature, yeah. Yeah, because I, I know there's tons of them. Oh, yeah. They're just like, do, why don't you just do what I'm telling you to do? But you yeah. literally have to lie and manipulate your kids to get them to do what you want them to do. And as funny as that sounds, Joanne, you are 100% correct. Because that is one of the secrets of parenting is you're going to have to lie to your kids a lot and, and a lot. And I mean, there's no sugarcoating it. It's a lie. You're telling them untruths, but it's for their benefit to be able to get stuff done and yours. Yeah. And they're, they're manipulative. You can manipulate kids at that age easily. So it's not hard to do that. No, uh, that no. only works for a short period of time until they get smart and figure out that you're just bullshitting them. Yeah. <laughs> so re building a bedtime routine, while I really, really hated it, was really, it was important, especially yep. as we gathered, collected more children. <laughs> uh huh. Absolutely. It I did. mean, it, it's like, you know, and, and they also, they take it with them through their whole childhood. And then even they, that's teaching them the foundation of good sleep hygiene for when they're teenagers and older. Absolutely. So and again, we, this, this is this, sorry, this just that's, one of the things that ties into this for me that I just, it just clicked for me was also this ties into understanding your child and understanding your child's character and being yeah. able to work with them to get them to do what you want to do. Because if you don't understand your child or if they're defiant or any way, you're going to be challenged at bedtime to get them to do anything. Um, but yeah, creating a routine for them. If you've got an active child or heaven forbid a child that's, you know, ADD or whatever, or just and they're just, shut down. yeah, they're, they can't shut their brains down at bedtime. You need a routine and something in there to help them channel down that monkey mind of theirs so mm -hmm. that they can, they can fall asleep. Otherwise they fall asleep just from sheer exhaustion, right? Yeah. They'll, they'll stay up in their rooms. If you leave them in their rooms after a certain routine and they'll bounce off the walls until they just have no more energy left and then they'll fall asleep. Right? Yeah. I mean, like, because some people have the unicorn kid where you just throw them in the room and they just stay oh. there and fall asleep. Yeah. Which we is didn't highly have unusual. That. No, yeah. like, that's highly no, unusual. No, no we, we had, had kids. We had kids that demanded certain stories and demanded certain toys. Oh, and the ever famous, I need, oh, what, who decided that at bedtime, all of a sudden children get thirsty? Yeah, it's like, suddenly you, they're parched. But suddenly they're parched. You can't get them to drink a fucking thing <laughs> at dinner time or anywhere else to hydrate. But come bedtime, now they're parched and they just cannot go to bed without a fucking drink of water. Yeah, nobody's it's, it's, more it's, dehydrated than a four-year-old yeah. going to bed. At going night. to bed. No, exactly. That's a that's a hilarious meme because it's absolutely true. Anything to stretch the, you know, the, the I want to stay awake kind of thing. Because when your kids figure out that you're not going to bed, but you're putting them to bed, then there's something like, wait a minute. You don't appreciate it. <laughs> oh, and what about fucking daylight savings time? Oh, and yeah. trying, to get, trying to get your kid to go to bed when it's fucking daylight outside, right? <laughs> it's like you got their blinds down and everything, but it's like, hey, there's kids playing out in the street. Why am I going to bed? All the explanations that you have to give to these little fuckers. <laughs> As to why it's their bedtime and not little Johnny's bedtime, who's still outside playing fucking road hockey because Johnny's parents don't give a fuck, right? And yeah, like, routine. I wish it was a universal put your kid to bedtime in the neighborhood. How many, how many times did we ever, like, have people over? And, I mean, we've had other friends and family over who have completely different routines to ours at night. Yeah. 
but everybody's in the same house kind of stuff. So we're trying to put our kids to bed at a certain hour. Meanwhile, their kids stay up for four more hours, right? Because they like to sleep in in the morning. So they keep their kids up till midnight. Well, let me tell you something. It don't matter how late you keep your kid up. They'll be up at 6 fucking (laughs) a.m. the next morning. That's been my experience. So you might think you're doing them a favor and yourself a favor and you'll be able to sleep in, but it ain't going to happen. No, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so we've had a kid that um, required a lot at bedtime, a bath, uh, the teeth, <laughs> the, oh, yeah. uh, the eye thing, the eye mask, uh-huh. the essential the, oils on sprayed the, on the pillowcase, <laughs> the classical music, the same song sang before bed every night. Every night. Every fucking night. And that kid. And, and, the, and the book, The Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar. Every <laughs> fucking night. I could recite that book today, verbatim. <laughs> I read it so many times. Oh, my God. Um, and you would not- read through it fast. Eh? By, the time, by the time, as a parent, you've got, that's the funny thing, because when it's bedtime and bed routine, you know that as soon as your job's done there and they're in bed and you finish your routine, you have a little bit of time to yourself as a grown Freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom. Those extra hours or few hours before you force yourself or fall or pass out at the, wherever, you've got that little bit of time that's yours, right? And these little fuckers are robbing you of it. With every glass of water they ask for and every reread of a story, it's digging into your time as a parent, your free time to not have to deal with them. So you yeah. end up fucking resenting them at bedtime. I remember you telling me you hated bedtime. You absolutely hated bedtime routines. Mm-hmm. And where I would look forward to it because then it would mean my time after that. My time to go have a, a like maybe have a drink or my time to, to go read or do something that didn't require you know a child's attention. Oh, those hated. moments were gold. I know you did. Yeah, it was so boring. <laughs> the whole fucking thing is so Boring. Again, it's back to routine and how you don't do routine. Yeah, right? and a lot of I know a lot of people feel the same way. They they find motherhood or parenthood boring at times. And that's definitely be. one of those times. And so I would do things to try and like rush through it, like skip pages yeah. in the book. Those fuckers know when you skip a page. Absolutely. They from do. a very young age, they they know when you're trying to pull the wool on the grass. Are they fake falling asleep? And you're looking at them, they're like, oh, and they're falling, and then you're like doing the tiptoe dance <laughs> out of the room. But yep. then, of course, you you kick <laughs> the toy that makes all kinds of noise, right? Because it was still on the floor because they didn't pick it up after you asked them to. So you end up kicking it, and then the noise starts, bang on, bang on, bang on, bang on, and you're like, fuck. And then the kids like, oh, well, finish the story, <laughs> and you fuck. <laughs> And then you're back to the walk and sit down. And, and like you said, to flip, flip, flip. Oh, you, did, you, you missed the part about so and so. Jesus Christ. Just go to bed. Uh, so things that I would do to try and get through it faster were, I wouldn't wait for the water question. I would just bring the water in a sippy cup. Leave yep. it on the dresser. Don't even just like, and and I would do like, especially for kids who need a lot of settling down at bedtime. Um, I found that one particular kid of ours like thrived on those small things like, okay, now it's time to put on your classical music. <laughs> now it's time to put on your mask and listen to the story. And, and I, I think it did help for quite some time. They had special lights, little twinkly lights for ambiance. And these things, they seem like such a pain in the ass at the time. But that one kid still requires a lot before they go to sleep at night. Before settling down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There is a lot of people suffer with that in adulthood. But and I guarantee you, people who suffer with sleep and have like monkey minds had them as a kid. For sure they did. Right. They just as a grown up, they have to figure out their own ways. They know they need to settle down and go see how many of us wake up at two o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden our brains are 100 percent. And then now we can't go back to sleep. Right. I mean, it's, Me. it, it, it happens to all of us. Yeah, I know. So um, <clears throat> with that being said, a lot of parents are walking around right now like they're zombies. They're exhausted. Their kids not sleeping through the night. Um, 
And all the experts are saying, don't sleep with your kids. I let my kid crawl into bed with me for a lot of like for a couple of years, every night. He when you were a sing, when you were a single mom, yes, you let him crawl in. But yeah, like, I'll what be honest with you. Do? Are you going to go a back and forth all night trying to? No, it was just like you know what the priority is sleep. So I don't even care. No, there's you, you pick your battles exactly. Yeah. When 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 I came along and we had our two kids, we we were a couple. You were a single mom, so you had to go every time to check on them you, you didn't have that supportive spouse that could get up and do it too right yeah um and you share that obligation when you have a, a good functioning you know couple you should be um you should be sharing that you should be yeah, yeah. if your partner is not sharing that then uh Unless you're a control freak and you feel like the need that you have to be the one to do it because your partner's too stupid I, or whatever to do it. I mean, yeah, there, okay. are, there are people that think that. Right? I know and, there's a lot of moms that are like that. And I want to yeah. say to them, that's a big fucking mistake. Yeah, because there's a lot of guys that are like, you want to do it? Okay, you go ahead and do it. All you're doing but is they won't argue stressing you. yourself out. So what if you yeah. do something differently? As yeah. long as it's not dangerous, just let it let him yeah. have some of the responsibility. Don't so what if he drops? Tight. So so what if he drops the baby a couple of times during? The night? Remember the night you hit um Chrissy's? I think it was Chrissy's yes, off the door cam. Yes, yeah. yes, that's that's something that torments me to this day. Yeah, people can probably tell by your voice, but they can't tell that you're a big guy. You like back then, you were probably six foot five and just walking with a baby's head hanging over your arm. Yep. <laughs> right off the corner of the Bye. wall because i was exhausted too it was three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and i had to i had to feed my daughter and it was like i could do it but i didn't want to wake up the rest of the house so i'll take her down to the family room and yeah i mean it was it was an innocent thing i felt awful i still feel awful to this day that it happened she's fine <laughs> i know she's fine but at the time it was just like whap and you're like oh fuck, what did i do and then and then you're like bottle in the mouth shut up don't cry go <laughs> Don't make a big deal about it. That's another secret too. Just a quick little sidebar secret. <clears throat> if your child hurts themselves, not seriously enough that you know that if you look at them and pay attention to them, they're going to cry. Mm -hmm. Don't ever bring attention or focus ignore, to ignore, it. Ignore, ignore. ignore it and watch them not, not fucking cry at all. I, lo I loved actually watching that in action. Yeah. If nobody paid attention to the child, they never cried. You'll so, learn about that yeah. blood curdling scream that needs attention and which one. For better. sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. There's a big difference in the tone of screen of crying when there is something so, wrong. What do you yeah. think about bed sharing to avoid problems with I think it's a last resort. Um, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, it's just like I'm not a fan of bed sharing for your pets either. Uh, your bed is your space. To me, my bed is my sanctuary. I love my sleep and I don't want anything interrupting it. Yeah. Which I mean, some people love having three kids in their bed with them. It's as a family unit. They think that's bonding and great. I think it's a pain in the ass. And I know I wouldn't get any sleep. So yeah. for me, for me, I don't support it. If it works for you, do it. I mean, it's it, I, I think don't know. with, with um, breastfeeding, it, it can be um, useful to have the baby close. If not, <laughs> like, sure, you're lying in bed breastfeeding. You're going to fall asleep with your baby on your breast. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And there are, there are little bassinets and things now that you can put in the bed too. Yeah, for sure. And oh, I, no. I, I'm not opposed to it. If it works for your situation, then go ahead and do it. Right. And I know probably those people that bed share now when their kids, you know, three, four years old, they're probably not going to be 13 and still bed sharing. No, but we, our own experience with our last two kids, both of them were kickers and movers. Yeah, having them having them in our bed, you're not going to get any fucking sleep. I mean, yeah, there's just no none. Yeah, right. We used to go camping and we'd have to split up the kids. OK, you get Chrissy, I get Sam. Both of them would kick and punch you in the middle of the night as yeah. a parent. Yeah, and, you, you just, you, and you'd be like, oh, on fucking you. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, put them in, put them in their own bed and they just eh, it's just like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of bed sharing either. Um, no. for, for especially when kids are old enough to sleep on their own. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So bedtime routines, I think, are we've established that they're a pretty good thing to do. Try not to be stuck in a routine. Like if you're, we do know people who couldn't do anything else if yeah it was like 
Bed, bedtime's at seven. Yep. So Absolutely. Every, everything um, revolved around that bedtime, but we weren't like that, but we were just like, okay, bedtime most of the time is at 730 and yep. either the things we're going to do five minutes before we give the warning, the warning, the warning is a good point. The warning. Yeah. yeah. Two minute warning, everyone. This is yes. coming. Some kids need two or three warnings. So set an alarm and tell them. And it's an absolute must. If you introduce, okay, it's bedtime right at the moment that they're having fun or focused on doing they're, something. They're, yeah. They, they can't shift that quickly. No. And they don't want, plus they don't want to, right? Mm -hmm. they, then they become defiant. Two minute warning, bedtime in five minutes. Okay, dad. Then yeah. you've set something in their mind. They know it's coming. So it's not going to be a shock to them. Yeah. And or as long as a snack, you could do like, <laughs> oh, it's time. It's five minutes before bed. So here's your little snack. Yeah. Here's your pre bedtime snack. It's all part of the routine. You're right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that routine won't work all the time. Um, for the most part, you know, if you're, if you're away on the weekend or you're in a hotel somewhere with your kids, that throws a oh. wrench into everybody's routine. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's a whole other conversation. Traveling with your kids, that's a whole other conversation mm -hmm. right there. That's one we should write down. Yeah, that's on, the, that's on the app too. So okay. people okay. talking about traveling with kids, it's a Anyway, routine, routines, I, I think they're great in their place. If they work for you and you can adjust with a routine and be able to create one for your kid, absolutely. If it's not, if you're not a routine person, don't force it because it won't work. Yeah. Right. You won't like it and you won't do it right. And your kids are not going to, you know, benefit from it. So, especially if you're a shift worker or something, yeah. and you're not always kind of, you know, you were a nine to fiver, and I was staying home, and so yeah. there was just it was just kind of easier for us. But um, yeah. if you're a shift worker, it might not work out as well. No, exactly, shift workers, and you know, one other thing I wanted to say at bedtime: no sugar at bedtime. Do oh, yourselves God, a favor. No. Do yourselves a favor. Yeah. No, limit the sugar in your child because that is just. That's just an energy button that they'll yeah, be up till no midnight. No juice, water no only. Juice. Oh yeah, just water. If they have to have a sip, which they all freaking do, give them water. <laughs> they won't drink it. It just they need to know that it's. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Just get one sip. Okay, now I'm better. <laughs> it's like they won something, right? You have to give them that little win. Yes, here's your water. Take yeah. it. Yeah, and when they come out of their room. Like, because oh, yeah. they will, they will, they'll come down the stairs and <laughs> peek around the corner and need something. Unless, unless you double gate them like you had to do with one of oh, ours. Yeah. <laughs> he was, we, that was for his own safety. Yeah. Uh, when they come around and peek around the corner at you because they need something, don't get, um, don't let it get to you. Like, try really hard to not let them see you react to it. Yeah, don't react to it. Just be yeah. like. Oh, look who's up. Let's get yeah, all back business. to business. Yeah. Yeah. Back, all back business. You go, no. Back you go. Yeah. No, it's not morning time. Back you go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't play that game because those little fuckers will play it every night. They will. And good fucking luck because it's a few years before they start to put themselves to bed and then they're teenagers. And then you're it's going a, to bed before them. They even then, go out. And then you're threatening them with a bucket of water to get up in the morning. Yeah, and yeah. Just, oh, I know this how another, the tables turn. That's a whole other yeah. conversation. <laughs> well, thank you so much for this chat. This is yeah, really sure. funny, like reliving our. <laughs> it, it's great for us because we get to relive our stories. I know. Uh, and uh, and hopefully anyone... we can offer some help for somebody too. Exactly. Yeah. And for anyone watching, you can always <laughs> come over to mamasoup.ca and uh, continue the conversation there under the tag. Mama Soup Talks. Awesome. I love you. Love you too, hon. See you next week. Okay. Bye. <laughs>